Hello my friends. Today we are going to the farms and national parks of the United States to see how the millions of deer here are raised. According to statistics, in 2021, the number of wild deer and deer raised on farms in the United States is about 36.7 million. Currently, due to a large area of agricultural land being abandoned and the younger generation not interested in hunting, the number of deer in the US has increased sharply over the years. Currently, there are 17 different deer breeds in the United States, and the most popular ones include the white-tailed deer, mule deer, reindeer, and the moose. It is estimated that each year about 12 million deer are born in the United States. Each female deer usually leaves one to three young, but most commonly two. This is the breeding process of a white-tailed deer farm in Texas. After an hour of birth, three baby deer were born and they were able to stand up on their own immediately after birth. Currently, Texas is the state with the largest number of deer farms in the country, with about 975 farms. In addition, this is also the state with the largest number of wild deer, with about 5.3 million. This accounts for 15% of the deer population of the country. Newborn stags weigh an average of six to eight pounds. In the wild, they are considered the favorite prey of predators such as coyotes, brown bears, and wildcats. After two days or so, the young deer will be accompanied by their mother to the fields to play. And for the first two weeks of life, their food is entirely mother's milk. These are deer on a farm in Oklahoma. The baby deers here start grazing when they reach three weeks of age, but cycling is continued until the baby deer reach four months of age. Currently, there are 223 licensed deer farms in Oklahoma, and the number of deer in the state is about 12 million. White-tailed deer are considered fully mature when they are 16 to 22 months old. At this point, the average male weight is about 175 pounds and the female's weight is 125 pounds. Every day, deer usually spend only three hours foraging and the rest of the time they spend playing and sleeping. Most deer usually only feed in the early morning and late afternoon. Each day, an adult deer will need to eat about 10 to 15 pounds of food, the equivalent of 7% of their body weight. This is a herd of wild deer in the town of Rangeli, Maine. In winter, when the lawns are covered with snow, animal lovers here will use corn to feed hundreds of wild deer. Without this amount of free food, it is very likely that large numbers of deer here could have died from lack of food. Not only are there hundreds of deer here, this free food party is also where wild turkeys like to visit. In the wild, wild deer usually live in herds of 10 to 30 animals. Each herd usually has three to five males, in which the leader will be the strongest male 
and it is responsible for leading the herd to the feeding sites and warning when there is danger. Sometimes we can come across a large herd of deer with hundreds of them feeding together. This is essentially a combination of many small herds and they will separate after feeding. In the United States, the mating season of deer usually lasts from September to February of the following year, depending on the species. However, mid-October is usually the busiest time of the mating season. At this time, the males in the herd will fight with each other for the right to mate with the females. This is also the time when the leading stags are easily robbed of their throne if they are not strong enough to win the battles. The prize for the winner is to mate with all of the female deer in the herd and even the female deer of other herds living nearby. In addition, the most important thing is that the winner will take the top position and have the obedience of other members of the herd. For farm-raised deer, they don't need to fight any other males for the right to mate. Instead, the ranchers will decide this. Here's what's going on at a deer farm in Mississippi. These two women will separate the two deer from the herd and proceed to cut their horns to prevent other attacks on other deer in the herd. Today, Mississippi has one of the largest deer populations in the country, with about 2.3 million deer, and 57% of them are living in national parks and wildlife reserves. In addition to feeding freely on the lawns, farm-raised deer also regularly eat other foods such as corn and grain. These are deer raised on a farm in Missouri. Today, Missouri is home to 1.7 million deer and around 53% of them are wild deer. Wild deer hunting is a licensed activity in the United States. Here, you need to buy a shooting license and only hunt a limited number of deer. According to statistics in 2020, in the United States, there are 11.4 million licensed deer hunters, of which 9.4 million are hunting deer with guns and bows. The remaining 2 million are only licensed to hunt deer with bows. Every year, about 6.3 million deer are hunted in the United States. This is only half the number of deer born each year. Therefore, the number of deer present in the country is still increasing rapidly. Hello, my friends. Today, we are going to farms in several states like Texas, Montana, Nebraska, and Kansas in the United States to see how the process of raising millions of cattle is done throughout the year. According to statistics in 2021, in the United States there are about 700,000 cattle ranches and the area of land that is used for cattle grazing across the country is about 614 million acres accounting for around 27% of the country's total land area. 
cattle are said to have appeared on the grasslands of the United States in the 40s of the last century. By the 80s, some people in Texas had gathered hundreds of cattle and created the first cattle ranches in the southwest regions of the United States. When the first cattle ranches were established, the Longhorn breed was said to be the most numerous, followed by the Angus and Hereford. To this day, due to the rapidly increasing demand for beef, the number of cattle ranches in the United States has increased many times since the 1980s. Currently, there are about 35.8 million calves born each year in the country, and up to 30% of them are born on farms in Texas. The first three months of the year are usually the breeding season for cows. This is the busiest period for cattle breeders. After about a week, the calves will follow their mothers to forage in the vast grasslands. At this stage, breeders do not allow their herd to move too far from their farm to ensure the health of the newborn calves. In the early reproductive stage, breeders often add some custom forage to the herd's diet, such as corn, oats or barley. Besides Texas, Nevada and Kansas are also the states with the largest acreage of grasslands used for grazing. When most calves reach two months old, they will need to be branded. Branding is the primary method of permanently identifying and providing a rancher's ownership of his livestock. This is especially important in the Western United States, where cattle from multiple ranches are run together or on bordering pastures. Dozens of calves at this farm are being herded into a fenced in area. Here, the cowboys will conduct branding on them. Although these calves are only two months old, it is difficult for an adult to hold them tightly. Therefore, branding of calves requires a combination of three to four people. These cowboys will use a hot iron rod and stick it on the of the calves, which causes them to burn and creates permanent scars on their bodies. This is a traditional method of branding and makes it very painful for the calves. However, many cattle ranchers still prefer to use this method. After the branding process is complete, the herd continues to be set free to feed upon the pasture. Looking at the calves, their health is barely affected by branding. In early April, when spring is over and the calves are more mature, herdsmen will move their herds to new pastures away from their farms. The thing they bring with them on their long trip are horses, food, tents and camping gear. The herd will also be moved to new pastures by some other cowboys. With a herd of about a thousand cows, cowboys need to move them to pasture about 20 to 30 miles from their current home. Cattle driving is not an easy job. Only cowboys with long-term cattle grazing experience are assigned this task, and helping them are experienced herding dogs. Today, the nation's largest herd belongs to the Wagoner Ranch in Texas, with about 6,800 cattle grazing on more than 500,000 acres. Cattle are considered fully mature 
when they reach 30 to 42 months of age. At that time, their average weight is about 1,100 to 1,300 pounds. Each day, an adult cattle needs to eat an amount equivalent to about 3% of their body weight. In the United States, grazing large herds also significantly reduces wildfires in the dry season. The presence of thousands of cattle helps to keep the height of the weeds under control. At night, grazing areas are often a favorite feeding spots for thousands of coyotes. According to a USDA report, each year about 90 to 120,000 cattle across the country are killed by predators, mainly coyotes. This is a process of moving a herd in Montana. It is not uncommon to encounter a large herd of cattle moving in the middle of the highway. If you are a driver and come across this scene, all your complaints are in vain because these cattle always move so leisurely. Each year from October to December is the time when many cattle auctions take place in Oklahoma. These trucks will go to the farm to transport thousands of cattle to the auction site. Each of these trucks usually carries between 28 and 30 cows. According to statistics, each year about 39 million cattle and calves are slaughtered across the country. After the cattle are transported to the auction site, they will be kept in these barns and wait for their turn to bid. This cattle market can hold auctions for 7,000 cattle every day. This is what happens in an auction. Did you hear and understand what the auctioneer said? Currently, the price of cattle depends on many factors, such as their weight, breed, and origin. On average, each adult cattle, weighing about 1,100 pounds, will cost between $200 and $300. By 2022, it is expected that livestock sales in the United States will be about $73 billion, accounting for 17% of the total sales of agricultural commodities. After the auction is over, thousands of cattle will be shipped to the beef processing plant. This is also the last trip of their lives. <laughs>